Okay, here we go on to our next section, section two of chapter 12. We're looking at chords and arcs. This is a very uh, theorem heavy section. Um, there's a lot of different things that we have that are um, kind of rules that we have um, and true statements about arcs and chords. So let's first start off with what's the difference between an arc and a chord. So a chord is a line segment who has endpoints on the circle. So any type of line that goes from one point of the circle to the other to another point on the circle, that is called a chord. Okay, so like down in this image below, SD would be considered a chord or DS if you want to think of it that way. So that would be a chord. And when you write a chord, you just write it, okay, just like that. And that's a chord. Okay. Now, if you're talking about the arc, which um, We've mentioned uh, when you're talking about an arc, what you're doing is that you're making an arc shape, and you would say arc SD. Okay. And that is the notation for an arc. Okay. And that's the curve that's between the two points. And if you only name off two points, we're talking about our minor arc, which I think we've discussed uh, back in like chapter 10. Um, so it's the minor arc. If you need to talk about a major arc, you need a third point to talk about the bigger one. So if I just say arc SD, like here, I'm talking about this arc right there. I'm talking about the smaller one, not the larger one. Okay. So a chord is just a line segment from point to point, and arc is the distance around it. So within a circle. So here are some things that we have that are true. So if you have congruent central angles, then the chords are going to be congruent. Okay. If you have congruent chords, they have congruent arcs. Congruent arcs have congruent central angles. Congruent uh, uh, chords that are equidistant from the center are congruent, and congruent chords are equidistant from the center. Okay, so we're going to look at these each one with an image. So if you didn't write it down, not a big deal. So here's the first one. So congruent angles or congruent central angles have congruent chords. So if you draw two um, central angles so here we have these central angles of 120 each and then from their endpoints of those angles you could draw a chord which is this blue one that distance will always be congruent okay that length will be the same same is true from this side so if I go from here across and here to cross these two are going to be congruent to each other okay and so that's going to be congruent to each other and that's what it means by congruent central angle. So that middle angle means that you're going to have congruent chords when you take the endpoints of the angles that are formed. Next one is that congruent chords have congruent arcs. So if you have two chords that are congruent, the same length, even if they intersect each other, the arcs that are formed from the endpoints of the chords are going to be congruent, those minor arcs, okay, those smaller arcs. Are going to be congruent to each other as well. Okay, always true no matter how you draw it. So if I draw another one from here to here and uh, one from here to here, okay, the arcs that are created are going to be congruent if those chords are congruent. Okay, next one. Congruent arcs have congruent central angles. So this is just the reverse of that first one. If we have arcs that are er, not the first one. The first one was talking about chords. Scratch that. Um, so if we have congruent arcs, we can go back to our central angles and say they're congruent. So if the arcs are congruent, which if you remember how we usually measured our arcs, sometimes we measured them in angles, and they were the measure of the central angles. So if they are congruent, then obviously their central angles must be congruent. So if the arcs are congruent, then the angles must be congruent as well. Central angles. Chords equidistant from the center must be congruent. So if you draw two chords that are the same distance from the center, which you have to make a 90 degree angle to find the distance, if this part is true, if that part's true, then the chords must be congruent. So if they are equidistant, then the chords must be congruent. Okay, they must be the same length. 
and the reverse is also true. If your chords are congruent, then they must be equidistant from the center. Okay, so if you have two chords and they're like they're congruent, they're the same, then the distance from each of those chords to the middle must also be the same. Okay, so if you take, if you look at this example, find x. Okay, hopefully you found x as 10 because these chords are congruent. This chord would be 30 and 30, which makes a 60. This whole thing is 60. So that means that they must be equidistant from the center. Both of them would be 10. Okay, so x is 10. Okay, in a circle, a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord will always bisect that chord and also the arc that is created. So if you draw a diameter and then you draw a chord that gets perpendicular, that is perpendicular to it, it's also going to bisect that chord. So if I drew another chord on this side and I said that this was 90 degrees, that means that this chord that I just drew would have to be bisected. Each side would be congruent. Okay, And same is true with the arc. The arc was also bisected. So this arc is equal to that arc. Okay. Um, in a circle, a diameter that bisects a chord, uh, that is also not a bi diagonal, will be perpendicular to that chord. Okay. So this is just doing the reverse of it. So if you draw a perpendicular bisector of any chord, what ends up happening is that you can find where the center is. You know that the center has to be along that line somewhere. So if I draw another one, let's say I draw a, another chord right here, and I draw the perpendicular bisector, what ends up happening is that I intersect where the center is. So if you're given a circle and you have to find the center of a circle, an easy way to do it is just draw two chords and find the perpendicular bisector of each. The point of intersection is going to be the center of that circle. Okay, so to find the center of a circle, just draw two chords and bisect them perpendicularly, and you'll find where they are. Okay. In a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord contains the center of the circle. So if you draw a perpendicular bisector of a chord, it is the diameter, essentially. Okay, So anytime you draw a perpendicular bisector of a chord, you've drawn a diameter. Two diameters will find your center. Okay, so that theorem heavy section. Here is your homework for this section. Uh, make sure you get it done.